Um, we'll welcome you all and introduce our speaker today. It's someone who I've known for many, many years. And I was very thankful that when I made the call and asked her to come and join us today and tell us all about you know, the next uh, two rounds of the CARE Act funding, um, she jumped right to it. So our um, speaker today is Patricia V. Click. Um, her background is she has 41 uh, years of service with Southern California F Edison. She recently retired from Edison and launched her own business uh, called Ventures Click Ventures. Um, she also um, works through the center at Lindustry, which is how she is provided with us here today. Um, Pat currently works with small businesses to help them achieve their dreams. Her coaching style is inclusive, engaging with each client and meeting them where they are in life. No judgment, no criticism, just support. During this phase of her life, she has developed a new passion, each one, teach one allowing people to be themselves and bring out their inner passion and love they have for each vision. So we are so pleased to have you here with us here today, Pat. Um, and with that, I will um, let you um, take it over right now. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction, Debbie. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Um, I'm just gonna be transparent. This is my first official presentation to any city officials. So i um, a little nervous, but we're going to get through all this. And the bottom line is when it's all said and done, we're going to learn about this program and I'm available to help anyone afterward. I see a few people on that I know and hi for the ones I do know. It's good to see you. And Debbie, we're going to start with this particular one because I want to talk about the Center by Lindustry, exactly what we offer to small businesses. So if you go to about us, if, can you make the screen a little larger, Deb, maybe full I'm screen? I'm not sure how okay, That's okay, that's okay. <laughs> it's just about us, it's uh, fine. Okay. Okay, so um, about the center. The Center by Industry is a nonprofit organization that aims to impact small businesses in underserved communities by providing necessary business resources for success. The center provides aid through education, funding, business consulting, and additional opportunities to support, to support small businesses. Our hands-on approach ensures that these businesses obtain most, the most essential, there we go, elements to succeed within their partner industry or business model. The center is the educational and technical assistant arm of Lindustry and an independent tax exempt organization under a 501c3 of the Internal Revenue Code. Lendistry is a minority-led technology-enabled community development financial institution, CDIF, that provides loans and other financial products to underserved small business owners. I wanted to read that exactly the way that we publish it. It's gonna be a lot of information we're gonna to cover today. I'm not gonna read everything, but this I thought it was important, especially if you do not know about the Center by Lendistry or about Lendistry. So thank you very much, Debbie. So if you can hit the home page on this. <laughs> That's okay. So the Center by Lenders, so we offer on-demand training courses. We, and we also have one-on-one -on -one counseling. So you will be able to, if in fact you want to be a client of the Center by Lenders, we we'll register with the Center by Lendistry and you will be assigned an advisor. Um, I work with business plans. So I pretty much work with most of all of our startup businesses. If they need a business plan, I help them design the business plan. Then we also have someone that helps with QuickBooks, um, social media, um, business entities, you name it as it relates to small businesses and we have someone that can assist you. We also have online training courses. And if in fact you go to the website, the Center by Lendistry, you'll see some of the on-demand courses. We have, oh, Excel, how to do Excel, PowerPoint, um, how to start a business. We have, even have business plans on that as well. So there's a lot of information on the website. Debbie, if you'd like to turn the screen over to me um, until you do that, I can um, add some value. Okay, give us one second and we'll turn it over to you, sorry. No, no, no problem. So I've been with the Center by Lendistry since they started a little over a year ago. 
I also worked, um, and I continue to work with PCR SBDC, also working with small businesses and trying to help um, people establish their businesses. Again, with business plans, sometimes we just talk. You know, someone had an idea, they had a thought, they wanna create a business. So we kind of talk about the marketing piece. You gotta go out there and do your research first to determine if there's even a market out there for what you wanna do. So I enjoy what I do. And as Debbie said, stated, I was with Edison for 41 years. I was a senior manager there. I enjoy my job there as well, but it's nothing like working with people trying to fulfill their dreams. That's so, so, so rewarding. So I appreciate the fact that I get the chance to do that. Okay. Just one second, we're getting the screen back up. Okay. Shall I move on to the deck or? Yes, you can move on to the deck, okay. but okay, right there. Let's just stop right there okay. where you are right now. So on-demand education, if in fact you decide to go on the site by yourself, click that, you'll see all the classes that we offer. One-on-one -on -one consulting, again, click learn more, all the classes that we offer, but the one-on-one, -on -one, you have someone specifically assigned to you to help you with the process. Here's a list of the classes, right? Business planning development, technology for small businesses. And you can read them. You can see all of the three columns there. Those are the ones that we have for on demand. We have live classes and webinars. So sign up if you need any help with your small business. Even on there, it's mentioned about PPPs, PPP. So if you're looking for forgiveness, you need help with the navigate to the forgiveness piece, we have someone to help you. If you need help with the idle loans, we have someone to help you. So we have quite a few people that can assist you in anything. I don't do it all, but I'm definitely connected with everyone that does. So thank you, Deb. I'm ready to go to the to the deck. Okay, just give us uh, give me one second. Take your time. So again, the deck that I'm going to present it's a lot of information on the deck. I am not going to read all of it. I'm going to highlight certain things in the deck. You're able to afterward go to yourself to CaliforniaRelief.com. And there's a lot of information there. And not only is it information about the program, there's also webinar schedules. So if you have a team of people that want to attend a webinar, there are also um, webinar schedules. And we'll talk about that in the end. That's going to be the last link we go to. But this is the California Relief Grant. And as we talked about a few minutes ago, this is funded or funded by California, but administered by Lender Street. Okay, bear with me. I have got it. And I think after this, I don't have to switch screens anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. okay. Okay, no problem. Okay, so we talked about the Center by Lindustry and we talked about Lindustry. So next slide, please. So we're going to talk about the grant program. Who's eligible? Who's not eligible? What the funding can be used for? for the application process, required documents, and recap, and then who to contact for assistance. Next slide. Okay, this is the slide. It's the supervisor in the house. Is she in? She is not here yet, but so I will um, just take over here for a moment. One of the reasons why we bring these seminars to you, and I know we've had a few this month, is because we have a lot of activity going on. But one of our priorities for the office is business recovery, especially, you know, post pandemic. So we want to make sure that we put out all the resources that are available to help the businesses in the second district. So we hope that the businesses that are here will share the information with other businesses and that we hope that the chambers and entrepreneur focused organizations that are here will also pass this information along to their um, constituents and um, members. Um, we hope that everyone can take advantage of these programs and is able to pivot and be resilient during this time. Okay, thank you, thank you. And that's one of the things that we found out in this process, even though we know it's all on the news and we publicize it, we'd be surprised when we run into people that's never even heard about the program. So that's sad because we're now into the seventh round. It started in January, but that's, that's okay. The more we tell, the more we'll, we'll share. Oh, thank you, Deb. And, and the more people hopefully will get in because uh, I kind of think we're in the last three rounds now. 
So right now we're in round number seven, but just to let you know, $1.5 billion has been added to the program with a total of $4 billion for the entire program from January to now. Right now we're in round number seven. Round number seven, no one can apply for on the outside. What we're gonna do in round number seven, everyone applied in round one through six will be considered for round number seven. They were waitlisted most likely. So if in fact they applied and they did not get the grant, most they either got a letter to say, I'm sorry, you're not eligible period, or you're gonna be waitlisted or you received the grant. So these are the people we're working with now until September the 16th, people who were waitlisted, and hopefully a lot of people will receive some money in this particular round. The next round is round eight. It opened up a couple, a few days ago on the 27th. It runs through September the 8th. And this is for nonprofit cultural institutions. And I'm gonna show you in a minute where you can apply for that. And then round nine, that opens up September 9th and it's gonna go through September the 30th. And then new people can apply and they're still gonna consider people from the wait list. So I'm really excited about this. It's not first come, first serve. There are requirements. We have three different types of grants. We have a $5,000 grant, 15 or 25,000. If you look at the slide, re gross revenue from 1,000 to 100,000, you're eligible for the 5,000. 100,000 to a million, you're eligible for the 15,000. And a million to 2.5, you're eligible for the $25,000 grant. Thank you, Deb. Next, please. So definition of a small business and a nonprofit. So here are the two definitions. Small, small business means sole proprietors, independent contractors, 1099, or registered for-profit businesses, um, C Corps, S Corps, LLC partnerships that have a yearly revenue of 2.5 or less based on their most recent taxes. We have 2018, 2019. A lot of people haven't filed their 2020, so they're using 18 and 19, but if you have your 20, we'll use that as well and a minimum of $1,000 of gross revenue. Small nonprofits means registered 501c3 or 501c6. Nonprofit entities, again, with gross revenue, 2.5 million or less. And we look at the 990 form for 2018, 2019, has a minimum um, gross revenue of $1,000. Nonprofit entities include corporations, LLCs, trust and unincorporated associations. So those are our definitions for the people who can apply. Next, please. So the eligibility requirements, I'm not gonna read them all, but I'm just kind of go through them. First, number one, your business had to be established and in business as of June 1st, 2019. Anything prior, you're eligible for it. You had to been impacted by COVID-19 according to the health and safety rules. You have to fill out a certification form. When you apply for this grant, there's a form with a lot of questions that I'm gonna ask you. You have to answer those questions and based on your answers will determine if in fact you're eligible to apply. Um, your business has to be located in the state of California. If in fact you have multiple businesses, we suggest you pick the highest one with gross revenue and apply for that one because you cannot do multiple businesses and you must have government issued ID. The verification that we'll be doing at Lendistry, as you can see on the right-hand side, this is how we're gonna verify with your taxes. Line one on your 1120 or your 1120S, Schedule C, line three, 10, um, line one on your 1065, line one and two on your Schedule F, farming, and line 12 on Form 990 for nonprofits. Okay, next slide, please. You're ineligible. So this is if you're ineligible, if you're not located in the state of California. A lot of people say, well, I do business in California. If you do not have a physical location in California, you're not qualified. So that's just be clear with that. Nonprofit business that are not registered as a 501c3 or a 501c6, not qualified. Government entities, not qualified unless you are a Native American tribe. Uh, if you're involved in a political or lobbying, not uh, qualified, passive business investment company, not qualified, churches or religious institutions, again, not qualified, financial business primarily engaged in the business of lending, no, and affiliated companies such as term is defined in 13 CFR, not qualified. If you're engaged in activities that's illegal, 
not qualified. Anything of a sexual nature, not qualified. Social, socially undesirable activity, not qualified. Uh, restrict pay, patronage for any other reason than capacity, you're not qualified. Speculative businesses, not qualified. And if in fact you have someone that owns 10% or more of the business that has been convicted of a felony or crime or on parole, not qualified. Okay, Deb. Use of funds. So we suggest that everyone keeps records of all their use of funds. Um, you could be audited, you might not be audited, but it's best that you keep it. The use of funds and all employee expenses, payroll costs, healthcare benefits, medical, you can use the funds. Uh, and again, I'm just kind of skipping over some, not reading all of them. Before you apply, I really think you should read everything to make sure that you are qualified and that you plan to use the funds accordingly. Uh, working capital, your rent, utilities, mortgage, then your cost of reopening your business. You might have to buy some PPE supplies or any other COVID related activities that have not been covered by other grants. So if you covered these costs with your PPP or with your idle, any other grants, you cannot use the funds. You can't double dip here. You cannot use the funds for human resource expenses for Medicaid and, and employee bonuses or severance pay, taxes, legal settlements, personal expenses not related to um, COVID-19 and repairs for things that insurance company has already covered or reimbursements of things that were donated to you. Next slide. Require, require documentation. There are going to be a lot of requirements, and it's a case by case. If you are a nonprofit, you're going to have certain requirements. If you are for profit, uh, depending on the size of your business, if you're a sole proprietor, independent contractor, various um, requirements are going to um, take place. So just make sure that when you get ready to apply, you read for the required documents for your type of business entity and be prepared. 2018, 2019 taxes are being used because a lot of people have not filed their 2020. However, it could be 2020 and 2019. You definitely want to have government ID. You want to be able to prove that you that you had the revenue over $1,000. And that's what happens in stage one. Stage two, if in fact you're selected, then some other things they might ask for, articles of incorporation, certificate of organization, fictitious name of registration, Government issued business license, it all depends on what city you're in, whether or not some of these things will be um, required. Nonprofit, you have to have an IRS tax exemption letter. And if you approve, then you have to provide some banking information as well. Okay, Deb. So the application process. Okay. Okay, how many rounds? There's only two rounds really left that someone can participate in as of now. And that's the arts and culture. And that's the one that's open now. And then the other one, the last one that's open to everyone, it opens up on September the 9th. You do not have to apply for each round. Again, it's only two. So before, in the beginning, when we had all these rounds going on, you apply for one, you're already automatically slipped. Um, you, if you didn't get anything in one, you were eligible for two. If you didn't get the two, you were eligible for three. Same concept, even though it's only two rounds left. On the right-hand side, you can see it again, the dates of the rounds. Please make note of them. Please do your homework and your research. So when it comes time to apply, you're ready to apply with all the necessary paperwork. Okay, Deb. Okay, this was a duplicate slide. I will apologize for that one. Okay, how will recipients be determined? So these are some of the criteria. Now we do not set the rules. The rules are handed down to us. Uh, businesses located in areas that have been impacted, highly impacted by COVID-19 based on COVID health and safety restrictions found in California's blueprint for safer economy, local county status and regional stay at home orders available at, and there's a link there. Business impacts the most financially based on gross revenue losses. Certain impacted industries, retail, food, hospitality, health and wellness, personal care, beauty and nail salons, spas and barbershops. Underserved small businesses, meaning women owned, minority person of color owned or veteran owned businesses 
at least 51% of the business is owned and run daily by such group and business located in the LMI and rural communities. That was, is a lot of the consideration. That is the consideration. You okay, Deb? Okay, notifications of the funding. Now, our first notification on, on number one, round one, came out January the 13th. Um, and we continue to notify. So you'll be notified if you're on the wait list, you'll be notified if you were successful and you're being considered. And even if you get a letter that says you're being considered for a grant, you still have to supply all the necessary information. And then they will follow up to say, okay, now you are approved and you move on to the next step. Next slide. Communi but we will communicate with you. Tips for applying. This is very, very important. You have to use Google Chrome only. Using other web browsers, and as you can see it, may disrupt the application process. So please make sure that you use Google Chrome or you share that with anyone that you're working with to use Google Chrome. Okay, next step. A lot of, okay. Also too, when you, your emails, it, it, they reject, they do not recognize if it's info at or contact at or no reply. Those are not recognized by our system and will be rejected. So please make sure that these email addresses do not lead with this, um, this format. Next one, scanning. We only accept information that is scanned. So you can't take a picture with your phone. If you can go, go to the next slide there, please. On the right, you see a lot of people just took a picture of their document and submitted it in. Those are all rejected. They need to be scanned electronically. And if you go to the previous slide, Debbie, if in fact you don't have a scanner, you can download Genius Scan or Adobe Scan and download even on your mobile device and submit in and it will accept it. Thank you, Deb. Okay. So then we have some FAQs. We have quite a few FAQs, so we'll cover some of them. Uh, would I be notified? We talked about that already. Yes, you will be notified if you're awarded and approved, waitlisted, or not selected. Next. What information is gonna pull from your bank? They need to verify that there's no fraud activity happening. So they have some methods they have to verify with your bank, certain activity with 90, within the 90 days or 120 days. So once they verify that activity, then you're good to go. Next, please. I have a franchise business with multiple locations. We talked about that too. No, you can only apply for one location, one business. So we suggest that you apply with the one with the highest revenue. Next, please. Our federal paycheck protect, we talked about this, about PPP and idle. Yes, you are eligible to apply, but you cannot use the funds to cover the same expenses for the same period of time. Okay, are recipients of county and city businesses relief funds eligible to apply? And will they be considered in any way in the process? Yes, they can apply, but again, you cannot use the funds for same expenses. Do I pay taxes? Oh yes, we get to pay taxes, we're lucky. So yes, you get to pay taxes and you will receive some information about your taxes prior to February 15th, 2022. Um, I don't own a computer, we're mobile friendly. You can apply using your mobile device. Just download the Google Chrome, download anything else you might need to scan and we can accept applications that way. But it's always nice if you know someone, you can go maybe to their office and, and submit it in. It might be easier for you. We do not take any screenshots, any verification. If you don't have information that you need for the process, you're gonna have to get, you're gonna have to figure out how to get it another way because we do not take any screenshots. Okay, yeah. Um, Do I need to provide receipts for my purchases? You do not need to provide receipts at this time, but we strongly suggest that you maintain all receipts. Okay. I'm undocumented. Can I apply for the grant? Yes. Non-US owners can apply for the grant, but be subject to I-10 verification through IS form CP-565. My business is incorporated outside of California, but I generate the majority of my business revenue 
in California. Am I eligible? No, you must physically be located in California and operate in California. Um, what about real estate companies, brokers, sales agents, eligible? Real estate professionals who practice real estate as their operating business and files a Schedule C on their personal taxes are eligible. Okay. A government issued photo ID is required document. Is a state ID allowed instead of a driver's license or would other forms of a picture identification be allowed? Yes, any government issued photo ID will be accepted. State ID or passport um, is another form that would be accepted as well. Do I have to submit documentation to verify ownership? The multi owner of the company have to submit for one owner or all. Whatever owner would have to have the largest percentage of the business that applies, that information is submitted on that particular owner, not on all the owners. Are the revenue thresholds for the grant amount based on gross revenue? A revenue is determined based on the IRS tax form definition of gross sales. Okay, I own multiple businesses. They asked this question before, but we have to answer sometimes a couple of times. Um, if you have multiple businesses, franchise loca locations, you will only be considered for one grant. And we suggest that you apply with the one with the highest revenue. If it's a partnership of multiple owners, some of low wealth and others are not, what is the percentage of ownership that must be low wealth? 51% must be low wealth. So we talked a little bit, you know, a short period of time is really hard to cover everything in detail. We talked about the grant eligibility requirements. Uh, Debbie's gonna put my contact number in, uh, in the chat room. And if you have any questions, you know, feel free to call me. Please provide me about 24 hours to respond. If I don't call, I will assign someone else to, to, to call you and, and, and answer any questions that you might have. Right now, we're gonna go to the California website Debbie, we move over there. You know um, why I put up the new website? I believe the supervisors joined us, if you wouldn't mind giving her a few oh, moments. Oh, hello there. Hi, Patricia. Thank hello. you so much. What a wonderful presentation. So helpful. All the nuts and bolts that everyone needs. Yes, yeah, good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you too. I, I see we also have... Steve Rosansky on the call, who is our Newport Beach Chamber of Commerce uh, Executive Director. Thank you, Steve, for joining us. I am um, I'm just so thrilled with our partnership and we, we're recording this. So we're gonna be posting it on our uh, Facebook page. We're also gonna send it out through our newsletter. Michael does a great job with our newsletter every week. And we wanna make sure that everyone gets this information. I know as a small business owner myself that some of those uh, tips that you were giving, I, I think that's information that people don't know. Like, for example, you can't take a picture and scan, use that as the scan. People don't know that. They don't know why their documents are getting uh, right. rejected. So right. really helpful tips. So thank you. Thank you. And for those, uh, for when we have this recorded and we're sharing it, and also for you on the call, if you know anyone who needs assistance, like they need a computer or they don't have a way to scan, and for whatever reason, maybe they're such a small organization or small business that they don't have these tools, please reach out to our office. We have tools here. We're here to serve. We can scan documents for you. We can assist. Our libraries are open. We have multiple libraries in Orange County in our library system with computer labs. We can help you. So we are here to help and we, we wanna be of assistance to get these grants out to small businesses and nonprofits in Orange County. Fantastic, man. Thank you very much for additional information. I appreciate that. I did not know the libraries had opened back up. Yes. So that's, that's good to know. That's good to know. Yes. Okay, so thanks, Deb, for bringing up this slide. So if you look at the top, you see arts and culture. If in fact, you're gonna apply for the arts and culture, this is where you will find the arts and culture application. And this is where you apply. For all other in round, and the next one, and there you go. They list all the arts and cultures. For round nine, that's 
starts September the 9th. You, you go under find a partner by county, unless it's by language, by county, put in the county. Then scroll down, we're gonna go to Orange County. There we go, there's orange, click orange. And scroll, these are all your partners. So all your partners in Orange County that can help you with the process. Now, the very last one is the Center by Industry. And of course, I'm gonna promote that one. And, um, and then you will click there, apply now. Okay, and once you put apply, then you click to apply. And then if you're a profit, if you're for profit, as you can see, grant program on the, on the left-hand side, grant programs for profit, you would start there. Grant programs for nonprofits, you would click there. We had a lot of people clicking the wrong one. And if they click the wrong one, they're not gonna be considered. So please make sure that you share that with everyone. So we changed the color, we put black on one and blue on the other so it would stand out and people would read it. And then you start applying. It talks about the requirements, the, everything that you need, that form, that certification form. You would download the form first, fill out the form, scan it into your system so you can upload it at the appropriate time. And then same thing on the, on the other side as well. I had to give you a lot of information in a very short period of time, you know, but this website is available. Scroll, Debbie, you can scroll back up and go back to home, please. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. Okay. That's go to the, go to, I can't see. Okay. If you start, well, that's okay. So okay. it's the Care Relief Grant Program. So you go All to right. Care Relief Grant Program. And there's going to be a lot of information there for you. You know, um, if you look at the top, you'll see all the options, you know, at, from home, for the arts and culture, for FAQs. And we also have videos. If you want to see a pre-recorded video already of this presentation that I just did, uh, all of our partners, they, they schedule presentations. So you can go in and say, when is the next presentation scheduled? You look at the schedule, you'll see where to go. And you can send your people to that, or you can attend it yourself to go for the next scheduled one. And let's see, is that it? No, it's the other one. I don't see it right now, but that's okay. There, yeah. it's a CA relief grant. So you would go to that one, CA uh, relief grant.com, and you can actually watch some live videos of pre recorded sessions. You can see the, um, the current FAQs and just get a lot of information for the program. So that's pretty much what I want to offer. Deb, I don't know if you put my number in the chat or if we have any questions. Um, okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. So I'm gonna put my phone number in the chat. I'm gonna put my name and phone number. What I'll also do is I'll send an email out to everybody with uh, the two links we went through. Okay, okay. As well as I believe you said we could share the deck, correct? Yes. Uh, Patricia.click. My email, Patricia.click. I, I don't know why I can't do two things at one time. <laughs> Talking type. Uh, Patricia.click at the center by Lindustry. I'm typing it in, you guys. Dot org. And that's going to be my email. Uh, again, if I can't help you, I would immediately find someone to help to answer your question. We have a short window, short period of time to make this happen. Please tell all small business owners, apply, apply, apply. Even if they don't think they're going to get it, apply because you never know. I've seen so many people just, you know, excited. I didn't think I was going to get this grant. You know, I didn't think I was going to, they're going to choose me. And they did. So that's any questions. That's my presentation for today. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Patricia. Debbie, you want to unshare your screen? Uh, this was so helpful, and we will get the word out, and we'll ask our uh, chamber and entrepreneurial business and nonprofit community partners to help 
share the information. And we're just grateful for your time today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And everybody have a wonderful day. Thank you. Uh-huh. Bye-bye.